Hello. It's a mover mailbag. We haven't done one of these in a while, and I've got mail that's stacked up. Birthday stuff, probably, because apparently I got older a couple weeks ago. So this is the mover mailbag. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good day. Good night. Whatever the case may be. We'll get to the packages, so to speak, in a minute. But I think this is the first time I've done a mover mailbag where I've actually just picked a question and started because I think people have short attention spans. So we're going to start with the very first question. Hopefully there's no audio problems. You can hear me. Everything is good. It's a good morning. Uh, but this first question comes from Kyle. With a K. Mover. During the recent balloon downings, the Jets used missiles instead of their guns. Missiles are expensive and rounds for the gun are relatively cheap. Balloons are large static targets and using guns prevents the adversary from gaining data on our platform's missile targeting systems. Why did the Jets use missiles instead of gun? Hopefully not because of hubris regards, Kyle. And this is a common question. I was so many people in the comments were asking this. Um, I think we live in a world where people want to have this gotcha, right? Where they're like, oh my God, no, they, they wasting all this money. So in the last year, I think we've spent like 46 plus billion dollars in Ukraine and a missile is about 450,000, $480,000. Like it always cracks me up when people are like, what my tax dollars? Because it's not even a drop in a bucket and the money's already spent. It's not like they're, you know, when they land, they have to go to you know the ammo de dump the ammo depot and buy an extra missile all these missiles have already been put together the money's already part of the defense budget it's just the way it is that's the money part of that i don't understand you know all my tax dollars at work like in the big scheme of things your tax contributions might have been like two cents in this whole operation including jet costs and all that stuff i mean Let's not get ahead of ourselves. But as far as why we didn't, so four balloons, right? Um, that I know of, you know, one was the Chinese spy balloon, which I, that was a lot of Chinese bots in my last video saying that there, there, it wasn't a spy balloon. It was a spy balloon, definitely a spy balloon. In fact, there's a cool shot of a U-2 flying over the thing, which is pretty awesome. Uh, so there, there's one. Um, the second one, I don't know what it is, but the third one was uh, allegedly a uh, handheld, a ham operator, uh, their little radio repeater. So, yeah, that was kind of a, a waste. And then the, the last one was a children's party balloon. So four balloons, wasted a whole bunch of missiles. Yeah, but here's why we didn't shoot the gun at them. So let's start with the one that was at 64,000 feet. Air is less dense higher you go, controllability, uh, you get into uh, higher airspeed be to maintain level flight. That's what they talk about the coffin corner where obviously it doesn't apply to the Raptor here, but for like the U-2 and other aircraft where if you go faster, you end up in the transonic supersonic regime, you go slower, you're stalling. So you don't have a lot of lift. Maneuverability, not that great. Second, the hardest target to shoot is a non-maneuvering stationary target with the gun. It's just the hardest target because, um, in order to have a successful gunshot, you have to have uh, range angles and closure, um, uh, solved. You also have to have be in plane in range and in lead for the bullet time of flight. Like those are basic gunning aerial gunnery parameters. When you start talking stationary and slow moving targets, your closure rates are super high. And in, in the Raptors case, I think they were like Mach 1.4 or something like that. There's no way that the, the balloon was going anywhere near that speed. I mean, you're, you're, you're talking closure rates over the mock. You don't want to shoot a balloon with a closure rate over the mock. It's just not going to work. Um, now, the Chinese balloon, the spy balloon, big target, right? Big honking target. These other balloons, very small targets. Hard to even see. In fact, they had trouble even finding the targets, you know? So that's the, the first tough part. When we shoot... Uh, cause people are like, well, you, you know, you can shoot a moving aircraft. Yeah. That's easier because you know, you talk 40, 45 foot wingspan gives you a lot of plan form. You've got closure under control. Cause remember it's relative. So range angle closure under control. It's, it's, it's not a problem, especially down in 10,000 feet, 15,000 feet, 5,000 feet and lower air's thick. You've got maneuverability up even 20,000 feet. The gunshot's going to be tough. 
So that's why you just you got too many problems. And why would you risk it just to save a couple hundred grand with our defense budget already of having paid for the missiles? I mean, it's basically it's a built in WESIP just to see if the missile works. Sometimes it does. Sometimes it does. We get our own data. We didn't give the Chinese any sensitive information by shooting these missiles. It just no. Second, the Canadians tried it in the late 90s. They shot down. They tried to shoot down a weather balloon and they shot thousands of rounds into this thing because uh, the balloon just doesn't pop. It's a it was like a 200 foot tall balloon. So, you know, you poke these holes in it, which I've shown before. Look, I've got one right here. You poke these holes in it and it doesn't just, you know, pop and deflate. It, it gradually loses pressure over time, which limits the predictability of where it goes. And you also don't know where the, the rounds go because the rounds are just going to go right through it. So now you're risking whatever's on the ground. You're risking where this thing's going to end up because you don't know. Uh, and you're just basically creating an unpredictable situation with the missile. They shot it into the payload because that's the best target. And it's going to create the best probability of kill going straight down and landing in the ocean where they could recover it. So that is uh, all of that. Um, so that's why they didn't. As for the other ones, I mean, I'm not going to talk about the why and the how, but uh, yeah. Uh, no, that's not true. See, you guys make up the stupid stuff. The first balloon was a spy balloon. It was not a $200 hobby balloon. It was a 200 foot tall spy balloon with solar arrays and surveillance equipment. Uh, you're thinking of the later ones that were the hobby balloons. So you guys get start getting these stories mixed up, and, and that's how we get this nonsense. And then people were like, it's a UFO. It's not a UFO. I mean, I guess it is a UFO, but they identified it later, so it's no longer an unidentified flying object. Okay, so that answers that question. Uh, let's look at the comments and see if there's any more uh, stuff. Uh, no. Russia just made a threat to shoot down satellites. Yeah, okay. They've got their own stuff to worry about. There probably is no coffin corner at the Raptor because, I mean, especially Mach 1.4. No, those things, no. It's not the coffin corner. Uh, let's see. Yeah, 1.4. He's, he's got plenty of smash left. I am ecstatic that Mardi Gras is over. It's not winding down. It's over, and thankfully. My least favorite time of year around here. Um, those are the same people who complain five. Yeah, I know. I, the, my tax dollars. Yeah, dude, your tax dollars are not spending. I mean, granted, fiscal, uh, being fiscally conservative and fiscally responsible with taxpayer funds. Absolutely. But we've got way bigger problems with the amount of money we waste than the worry about a $450,000 missile. Um, I don't know. Good question. I don't think there's a lot of air to air stuff happening. I think it's mostly Sam's. Uh, there have been some cool videos. I saw a Su-25 video on Twitter the other day. They were flying like like highway level with music. So, see, I don't know about all that. That's now you're talking Star Wars uh, because I like having a real mission. Did they launch F-22? I saw was, three of them were Raptor kills. One of them was a Viper kills. Uh, Viper kill with the uh, Duluth Vipers shooting one of them down. Boy, I wish. I don't know. I mean, I, I'm. There's nothing to announce at this moment. Um, nope, none really. Uh, let's see. Spend everything for service. Oh boy, there's a lot of a lot of questions here. There's a question about Spider-Man. That's a new one. Yes, I've seen Spider-Man. <laughs> uh, no, no rudder input, at least not in the Viper. Not in the Viper. Okay, so we've actually got packages. Let's get to that here in a second. I've been uh, doing enough. Uh, 
Am I gonna have to get the knife out on this one? No. Ah, got it. Got him. Oh, I can get rid of that. Hide the current comment. How you guys doing today? Uh, no, they were not U.S. propaganda. God, you people are come up with the weirdest conspiracy theories. I tell you. All right, this says mover. It's a card. It's a birthday card. It says press here. Ah, because it's on fire. Our second responders. Mover, you're not old. It just take. It doesn't stop. It eventually will stop. Mover, you're not old. It just takes a bit more to light your cake. Is it not here? Is it hot in here or is it just the cake? Have a good birthday, Renee from Wisconsin. Thanks, Renee. That's awesome. Thank you. It was a couple, couple weeks ago. Uh, should I follow arm wrestling? No. <laughs> uh, what is your... Wait, hold on. Where, that was a good one. That was a good question. What is your favorite dog breed? Rescue. The ones that are on the streets in the garbage bags. That she, she grabbed from, from whatever. I know I don't follow arm wrestling or regular wrestling or anything with with men wrestling each other. Oh, it says 40. Yeah, here's your mean 40. 40 birthday is a day to dream, to laugh, to remember, celebrate the life you lived, the lives you touched, and the wonderful person. It says, thank you for sharing your life with us. Happy 40th, Lynn. And Lynn sent this card along with, what is this? Bubble, bubbly bub, bubbles. Uh oh. What's well, a mug? And the mug says Please do not annoy the writer. He may put you in a book and kill you. I have done that before, allegedly. That is a true story. I love making villains out of people. Got a lot of content for that. All right. That's all. What? Oh, nope. It's not all. But wait, there's more. This is, nope, this one. Last one. Uh, yes, I have heard about that. I also heard about the Chinese. So I'm going to do a video maybe about the Chinese. They, they made a their own little video back in 2019 about them intercepting balloons. Oh, it's just a, a check. I don't Oh, it's it's a check and it says good racing. Oh, that's nice. Thank you, uh, Greg and Cynthia. Greg in Alabama. Well, oh, that's that's nice. All right. So. It, it's not U.S. propaganda. It's more media propaganda, more media hysterics. What about jello wrestling? As long as it's not dudes, that's fine. Right, thanks. Do you follow Formula? Uh, no, I do not. NASCAR. I'm starting to get into IMSA and GTE and Team Corvette, and I can't wait to watch Le Mans. Uh, I do not. All right, let's see here. Where you been, son? I don't know. Places. I've been doing a lot of eye racing. That's my Thrustmaster TSXW racer. They were very nice and sent me that. So some more stuff. Um, thank you for sharing your life. Well, you're welcome. Thanks for watching and being a part of it. Chinese soy balloon. <laughs> soy balloon? <laughs> Uh, yeah. <sighs> All right. No, it's not correct. They missed with one missile. Uh, only, only one was a miss out of all of them. So, and I mean, you're talking a three foot tall children's balloon. So, I mean, the fact that they hit with one is pretty impressive to me. Daily everyday carry. Uh, oh man, it's not in here. Um, well, I got my 
Glock 19 is my desk gun, but I got a 43 X MOS as my, my daily carry, which is awesome. Um, yeah. I don't know Wingnut, but I know his videos and they're pretty cool. I've always been a fan of his videos. Very well done. Uh, yeah. All right. So got some um, mail, email. This from Nate, This comes from Nate. Uh, hey, Mover, I'm a big fan of your channel. I've always watched about every one of your videos so far. Hope you're watching now, Nate. One thing that you've repeated a number of times when dealing with anything involving the military specifically is make them tell you no. Well, to keep things short, I've always wanted to be a military pilot, but various things with life prevented such a thing, or so a younger me thought. My question is, have you ever heard of anyone being granted an age waiver for pilot training? Yes. That's my answer, yes. Uh, Air Force Sanders say the age cutoff is 33, but I start of training. I'm currently 32. I'll be 34 by the time I finish. My bachelor's degree will qualify for OTS. Do you think it's something worth pursuing? Yeah. Make them tell you no. I mean, you said it in your own email. That's the only way you're going to find out because I know of people that are 35 that have done it, you know, and obviously they had a good background, you know, the guy was a JTAC. So obviously good choice for an A-10 unit, but your best chance is with a guard reserve unit that just likes you and you're, you're competitive and your scores are good and all that other stuff. Uh, anyway, this one is, uh, from Isaiah is my idea genius or dumb. Hey, Mover, I was curious about your thoughts on something. I'm 18, and this fall I plan to start working on my degree and join the reserves at Nellis to help pay for it. Good idea. In the end, the idea would be that after I finish my four-year, I can apply to be a reserve pilot. I don't think Nellis would have UPT boards, but I like where you're going, although I'd probably recommend the guard. But if that fails, I would go the active duty route. Anyway, recently I had an idea that I wasn't sure, sure whether it was genius or stupid. Do you think someone getting many hours in a sim like DCS years in advance would end up scoring better for track selection UPT? I know it's just a sim and not real life, but I've heard the term study level sim thrown around a lot with, with it and wondered if that applies to such an extent. No. So how do I put this delicately? You don't want to create bad habits. And right now you don't know what you don't know. So the idea of trying to, to get ahead by a study level sim on your computer, you might get basic ideas, basic thoughts. What I don't want you to do is get bad habits. Your best bet is to save that money and go get real flying experience because the difference between DCS and real life is in real life, it's your pink body on the line. In DCS, you just hit the reset button. And I think people start getting used to DCS. Same thing with iRacing, right? When you go race in real life, people are a little bit more conservative, typically, because they know that if they go and hit the wall and flip, it's going to hurt. In iRacing, they just yell at you on the chat and then hit a fix, fast repair and then it's good. Same thing in DCS. I don't want you to get these bad habits. Now, can it help you with like the, the bat, the basic aptitude test, whatever they're calling that T-Bass now, probably. Will it help you in pilot training? Unless you're, I don't, even think that, I don't think there is an unless. I don't think DCS will directly help you with pilot training. I just, I, I don't see that being a thing because there's nothing in DCS that even simulates like the T-6. Uh, there's nothing that replicates the t-38 the f5 is nowhere close i mean the f5 they're two different jets and you know maybe by the time you're on board at 18 it might be the t7 which there's for sure nothing that's going to replicate that i just i don't see that no i just don't see it being a thing all right adam says just a fan couldn't help but create the following oh this is an image uh he created a, a thing i can't use that okay all right back to the old, old shadow oh man i, I keep forgetting to to do, do that. Uh, so, I mean, you guys, there's different levels of intelligence, right? We don't just stick with just one thing, right? Satellites, good imagery, but update rates. I mean, satellites are in orbit, so they're not always over. So fidelity of imagery, sensors, 
um, signals. I mean, there's a whole lot of different levels of intelligence you can get. That's not just, oh, we're going to take pictures of something. Yes, I am currently an airline pilot. I'm not retired. I'm 40, man. Got way too much time. I don't know that it was a $12 balloon. I don't know how much the ham radios cost, but yeah, I don't know. But again, I mean, it's already a sunk cost. You already paid for that. That missile was already spent. Let's see what else we got. Uh, no, false. I love these wild, like... Says there will be no pilots in three years. AI will fly planes. Three years? No. Not going to happen. You can take that to the bank. VR. VR, VR. No matter what you do, VR is better. Uh, well, at least the two things I do. I mean, I do eye racing and sometimes I do flight sims. And VR, by far, the best. Who is a retired pilot? That's my question to you. Who? I'm not a, I'm not an owl. I'm just asking the question. Who? Have you ever fired a missile? Yeah, it's on the channel. I've got a whole video of me shooting to, shooting an aim nine. Mike. Uh, yes, it was like, where do you guys get this information? Like, do, are you proud of being wrong? Like, wow. Uh, because there are specific, I mean, there are specific units in certain areas, right? I mean, Alaska F-22, the one, um, up in near Wisconsin, you know, they're sitting alert there. There's specific alert missions. They already are. Yes. And a jet being tested in dogfight does not translate to fighter pilots will be obsolete in three years. You think he means me? Yeah. Well, again, wrong. Piddle packs. You take pedal packs and you hope that that's all you need. Bring snacks. No, I don't have my CFI. I do not. Uh, I don't know. I no no. I think the F sixteen is awesome. Don't know anything about the Eurofighter. Don't care. Bro science from Facebook and Twitter. I think so. Reddit. Um, the YouTube comment section. Yeah, absolutely. Oh my gosh, we got some interesting comments. Yeah, right. There are many pilots named Hugh Mover. <laughs> uh, am I brainwashed by the media or the comments? See, you guys need to address who these are for so I know how to respond. Uh, I don't think so. I don't think it'll be 20 years either. I don't think you'll ever see no pilots. Not in my lifetime. Because I think you'll see loyal wingmen, autonomous operations, but the statement no pilots, absolutely not. I don't think that's going to be a thing. What is your view on the one pilot cockpit in commercial aviation? I really don't have one. So, you know, the airline guys vehemently oppose it. So I'll defer to them. Uh, I mean, I, I could you, I mean, you're on OBOGs and you're on your own oxygen system. Should you, I mean, if you're above it, uh, I, I wouldn't. Can you comment on how hard the U2 selfie was? Probably not. Probably not difficult at all. I mean, not, not a challenging thing to do. Can you fly in a fighter? Uh, well, thank you. I've never been called a cute bunny before. Today is a first. <clears throat> yeah, 
Yeah, that one. And uh, I could agree with you, but then we'd both be wrong. That's T-Bear's favorite. And I've used that in actually my books. I've used that many times, actually. Uh, shut this off and let's hit the lakefront. Why? All right, what's up, Mover? Love your videos, content, actually in the process of joining the Navy and your video help with things. Awesome, cool. Mover Supersonic will be there in 30 seconds. Are there air to air? I don't even know what that word is. Uh, it's a great idea. More, more, the more the merrier. Uh, I've been trying to get Gonky to do the Hornet versus Viper, but man, getting him to do anything these days is tough. He's got two kids now. Same with Wombat. Wombat being the El Capitan. Here, I'm going to send him the link and see if he shows up. Last minute. Wombat ends up with this potty chair. Saves this, this chat because right now it's off the rails. Uh, hey, Mover, thanks for the stream. Just got here. Did you already talk about how they shot a thousand rounds at the rogue Canadian weather balloon and it didn't go down? I sure did. Sure did. Great minds think alike. Yeah, me too. This is not the normal fan base that I'm used to. There's been a lot of Chinese bots in this one, or Russian bots, or whatever the bully of the day is. My vision isn't good enough. Well, it depends. I mean, make them tell you no. My vision, they told me my vision wasn't good enough, and I've never worn glasses, so there's always a chance. I mean, and surgery is an option. Yeah, I mean, that is an option. Literally all the videos I've talked about this. Yeah, that's a good point. Having your entire Air Force be unmanned, if you can hack the guidance, you've got to work on data link security a lot. No, I don't. I haven't thought about because I'm not going to build anything. Um, not going to build anything. But buying one, eh, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, you just use a piddle pack. No, I have no trips anywhere planned anytime. Uh, take that back. Do I have trips planned? I might. I might have some trips planned. Not about not to the West Coast, though. So. Uh, yeah, they're well, they're not caffeine. They're they're goat pills. They're prescribed. Yeah, Wombat didn't take the bait. Update on racing. Still looking for sponsors. It's a tough, tough world. The Daytona weekend was awesome. Um, the Arca race looked really good. I was really happy to see uh, not only were the ratings good, but it was a really entertaining race there at the end. The red flag obviously was kind of, you know, whatever, and it took them forever. I mean, to do 80 laps in almost three hours, that's kind of a lot. But um, it looked like a good race. In the end, it was Van Alst winning. I mean, it's nice to see the everyman, you know, winning that race. So that was pretty cool. Um, Xfinity race was good. Truck race was good. And then the Daytona 500 was boring at first. A lot of commercials, a lot of commercials in bad places. And then I enjoyed the finish. I'm still working on that sci-fi book. It's just a, it's a slog, man. It takes, it takes a while. Uh, no, I, I love the truth. In fact, this channel is based on facts and truth. You should try it sometime. Yes. No, not to my knowledge. I think they're doing the dog thing today at the lakefront. The Marty Paws. Uh, forbidden snacks? No, but I did know a guy that spilled a bunch of jelly beans. And I think the crew chief, they found like 200 jelly beans under the seat after he said, oh, yeah, I spilled a couple. 
Should have Goose is dead, sir. Or ma'am. When I was in ROTC, uh, it is, but you don't need perfect vision, so you can still do this without. So that's just old school. Probably not going to Oshkosh this year. Not sold it. Got rid of the boat. Wasn't my boat, it's my dad's boat. But yeah, got rid of the boat. How long does it take? Uh, Deuce actually just transitioned. Uh, it was five months process. Uh, so the decision's already passed. Look, there is Wombat. The decision's already passed, and I got another year leave of absence. Wombat, thank God. What's going on? You're, you're Nordo. I cannot, I cannot hear you, what? sir. Really? What? Your potty chair is. Oh, what boy. No? Maybe it's just me. Can y'all hear Wombat? Oh, man. Hold on. We didn't it might flight. be me. I might not be able to hear you for. Yep, yeah, it's, it's me. Hold on. I have to put my headphones in. I wasn't expecting Does this mean I could say whatever I want about Mover for the next five seconds? Hmm. Hmm. Okay, that's not going to work. Uh, hold on. Audio. Change it to. Hello, Wombat. Hi. How you doing? How are you? Oh, good. How okay. are you? I'm fine, thank you. Welcome back. All right. Thanks. Thanks for having me. What are we talking uh, about? Balloons? Heard you had a new baby. <laughs> That's a rumor. That's a rumor. Yeah. yeah, we're talking about balloons and why this wouldn't take down a 200 foot tall balloon. Hmm. Hmm. But but wait wait right here oh boy i'll be back wombat has left the chat with this still wouldn't do anything oh it's cool though isn't it hey uh, i wanted to ask you i'm glad you're here because i have questions <laughs> good for the for the navy types you were uh, paddles I, I believe the term is angels in white, but one eyed pig. <laughs> no, okay. Um, yes. So the I question was an still am. Question. It's kind of like Marines. Okay. But. Yeah. Go ahead. I, my apologies. Um, oh, if I did that. Wow. What are you? You're all over the place. I know. I'm, I'm trying to I'm trying to free my homie here. Whoa. Uh, Whoa. But I lost the thing. Anyway, so the question is. Uh, in did you watch the video of the F thirty five mishap? First I, um, you and I spoke huh? about it a long time ago. No, right? no, the video I just did. I did not. I haven't had a chance. I just got off oh, a trip. Okay. So, okay. what? What are we? What's the? What? Fill me in. I mean, I'll, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm, I'm, I'm fixing my stuff. I wasn't expecting company. <sighs> I'm sorry. I was excited when I saw it. I, was, I know. I, I saw your lunch. And... There we go. Okay. So the question then becomes, mm -hmm. uh, so the gist of that whole thing was he tried to do a, a shit hot break, which, all right. So do you agree with Gonky that a shit hot break is not 400 knots? Yes. Okay. So that was the first thing that they said he was doing a shit hot break at 400 knots. The speed is, yeah. okay. Yeah. But he was used to doing them at 350. So, okay. He said, you know, that he fat Amy, you got to flick a switch and that puts it in the medium mode, which is like auto throttles. Okay. Where you pitch the nose, the throttle does its own thing and you're, you're doing VSI. And okay. then when you're settled, you hit the pinky switch and it puts it in magic carpet mode where you're flying the, the yes. little con Put container, the thing the thing and glide the, slope. Yeah. Well, yep. It's calculating all the stuff because yep. the ship's talking to it and all that stuff. Yep. He Correct. did none of that. He well, came that around could be a problem. 180 knots in idle, 48 seconds in idle, 12 seconds in the groove, left it in idle, and thought that the LSOs were going to give him a wave off, and they didn't. 
And eventually they did, but it was like, go around, use burner, 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 burner. But yep. by the time you use burner, he hit, he slammed the, the deck and the rest is history. Mm -hmm. So the question then, because uh, I, I mentioned this in the Navy, you don't take your own wave offs. Correct. Why Correct. is that? Uh, it's a trust thing, frankly. Um, there's things that as a pilot, you may not see that as an LSO, I do see. Mm. So um, be because, right, every other place that you land in the world is a fixed runway. It's the only place you're going to land where your airport's moving and it's moving, you know, in a lot of aspects, it's moving forward to the right and up and down. So it's on every axis, if you think about it. Um, so there are times where that that's just the relationship of it. That's the trust level of it. I'm not going to let you hit the back of the ship, but I need you to listen to me uh, because I may see something that, that you don't see. I may be targeting a wire that you don't think I'm targeting um, because it's so dynamic. So, so yes, there is no own wave off in that particular case. Yeah. So the report said that earlier they had a trend of taxi one wires. So they were targeting the two wire because something was going on with the three wire and they didn't want to use it. Is that a thing? Like where you're sure. like, Hey, you I can, don't want to use you, the three wire. You and can, so we're going to target I mean, this. They would, we would target different wires for, for various things. Um, and it's, it's really seamless. I mean, it's, it's transparent to the pilot in a lot of aspects. Um, now, that being said, with magic carpet and things like that, maybe it's not as much. But in traditional ball flying, um, for the most part, either in the E2 or the Hornet or the T45, I never knew what wire they were targeting unless they told me. I just I just flew the ball and mm. and stopped, you know. So um, and, and there were times where whether it was I mean, not as I don't recall. I'm not saying that this never happened, but I don't recall us targeting a wire because we had a rash of something, mm -hmm. uh, i.e. taxi one wires target the two. That doesn't make any sense to me. Well, no, no, no. The, um, the two wire was because the three wire, there was something going on with the three wire. Okay. That is it. And, and, and then they were, they were worried about, they said, Hey, we had a couple taxi one wires, So let's not give them any slack, you know, let's sure, wave, sure. you know, wave off early if we need to, because we we're, we're scared. Sure. And, and I mean, it's not abnormal to taxi or to, I'm sorry, target, you're hitting me with a lot of stuff right off the bat here. Target a lot of um, the various different wires. I mean, and it, it depended. I mean, I, I was literally just flying yesterday with a buddy of mine, and we were talking about that. And there was a time in the E2 I had a, a tow link failure, where which is the launch bar, just called the tow link in the E2. It failed off the catapult, and they brought us back around to trap, dumped all the gas I had to, and um, they were targeting you. In that case, you would target the two, you would strip the three and the four because you don't want the tow link or launch bar to catch a wire, right? So you get rid of them. You pull the three and the four off. Um, the problem is uh, the two wire was down. So, mm. so they were targeting the one wire. And <laughs> I was like, okay, you know, that's mm. the trust level was there with paddles that, you know, hey, I'm going to fly the ball the way I was taught to fly the ball. And if I don't look good, they're going to get rid of me. Um, and we trapped on the one wire and, and that was that. And I think our hook to ramp was probably less than six foot or something ridiculous, but whatever. Oh That's yeah, no. it is what it is. So, um, so it doesn't surprise me that they were targeting, targeting variously different wires based on, um, you know, the circumstances. That's not abnormal. That's pretty normal actually. Yeah. Um, so the other part in the recommendations, they wanted uh, visual and audio cues, that you're not in the mode that you think you are like the PLM mode and all that stuff uh, for both the Hornet and the F-35. And let me ask you if you agree with this, the PLM modes are the APC and all that stuff was as desired in the checklist. Mm -hmm. One of the recommendations was to make it mandatory. Uh, so it's interesting. I just, my previous trip I flew was with a, with an FO who just left the Navy, um, LSO VFA one twenty two instructor. And, um, we spoke a lot about this and it's getting more and more like that's the norm. And, and it's, it's almost, 
the way I equated it to him while we were flying, I asked him, I go, is this, is this a, a transitional time in naval aviation? And I, and I made this analogy. I go back in the day in civilian aviation and airliners, right? The old school guys and girls hand flew everything. Mm-hmm. You know, you're going from Atlanta to LA and they're up there hand flying a cruise. Well, then autopilots came and the old school guys were like, I'm not going to trust the computer. Um, and now we've swung the pendulum so far in civilian aviation where in a lot of respects, we have to go back to hand flying because people are so reliant on the automation. Um, I, I asked him, I go, in your opinion, is this us doing that in aviation where it's like, well, why wouldn't we use it? Because it's such a good system. And he, he agreed 100%. He, is, he said it's, it's that good of a system that they're, they're training to that system working. Now, as an old school guy, does that make me kind of cringe a little bit? Yeah, but, but I didn't have those systems, right? So, I, but surely in the sim or like, remember in the horn, it used to be HUD off. You get the upgrade or what? I mean, would oh, I'm are, are they sure? Well tra- are they, but are they training to not using this at any point? I, like, it sounded like, and again, I'm not an expert on it, but it sounded like in a lot of respects, no, they were training to it being there. Yeah, and it it, just that's works. Ex- correct. And wow. that again is the old school guy in me. Now remember, I mean, my the E twos I flew were were fairly new, but pretty unautomated, right? And the Hornets I flew were fairly old, so stuff broke. So um, yeah, but the fat Amy breaks too, dude. I've I've oh, supported uh, you, those guys. The helmet, they're like all that stuff. I'm like, okay. uh, any time, in my opinion, and I don't. We don't need to get into a whole discussion on the F thirty five and its pitfalls, but. Anytime you don't have redundancies in systems in naval aviation where you are going to put that thing on a flight deck in salt air and salt water and constantly slam it against the flight deck, you're setting yourself up for failure. That that's my take. Like if you if oh, it, if wait, a wait, wait we had a reminder from the chat. Hold on. <laughs> if a contractor just, or a manufacturer take. tells me, with my experience, which is not much compared to some of the other people that we've talked to. But tells me that it will not break. I laugh and say it's not a matter of will. It's, it's already when. broken. It will. It's, it's already going broken. To. Yeah. It's already um, and we. This is unfortunately something that we have had to relearn over and over and over again in in aviation, in military aviation. And there are so many things you can point at, specifically to the F thirty five, that are lessons that we've forgotten from the past. And those include things like single engine at the ship. They include things like no gun internally. And I'm not saying, again, I'm not saying like, hey, maybe you don't need it, right? Maybe this is the world we're fighting now. But history has proven that we do need that. And I will tell you, somebody who did many traps in a single engine T-45 at the ship, granted all daytime, every time we went feet wet, <laughs> your, your backup engine is the one you're sitting on. And that's not very comfortable in my opinion. Yeah, there was a comment. I actually responded to it this morning. It's pretty disappointing. It was he was alleged to be a former navy former naval aviator, and right. his comment was, you know, basically because I in the review I said, "Hey, stuff happens. We make mistakes, right? Doesn't matter, sure. especially younger people that don't have the breadth and depth of experience. You know, it's the sure. luck bag versus the skill bag versus the experience bag and all that buckets, if you will." And he said, no, we don't make those mistakes. Like, that's not, that's not, that's not, we don't do that. And then he said that it was a big conspiracy because the Navy won't release his name. Like that there were some other agenda. And I'm like, the Navy never releases. No. Unless it's a death, you know, unless it's a a class A fatality. Like, And I didn't read the, I didn't read the comments, but what I'll tell you from 20 years in naval aviation um, is the person who commented is either not, a naval that's aviator what I, that's what I said. or yeah. is a piss poor naval aviator that's ignorant because yeah. we do make those mistakes. We make them all the time. Yeah. That is part of it. Nasty yeah. alluded to it in the video that I did with him about how you push it to a point and that's how you mm-hmm. know your limits. When you push your limits to the absolute limit, you will make mistakes. That's just inevitable, but you're going to learn from them, right? Every dumb thing I've done in an aircraft is now in my bag of tricks for when I go fly all these nice people from you know <laughs> Atlanta to Birmingham and something goes wrong. Right. And to say that we don't make those mistakes is is 100% what? ignorant and and again to say that they don't release the names they 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 don't. 
I mean, yeah. unless, like you said, it's a fatality. Well, and, and the thing is, it's not that we don't make mistakes. It's that one of two things happens. You make a mistake and you've got enough experience to overcome it. So nobody knows about it and nothing ever happens mm-hmm. or you're lucky or both, or it becomes a mishap. I mean, that's usually the way it works out, right? You'll have one of those moments where, and I've interviewed, you know, from every generation, guys are like, boy, that was a no shit moment. That was about to be, uh, you know, and then they're like, well, I got lucky or a, you know, at least I knew to go back and do this, but I don't know. I don't like that attitude. Everybody nope. makes mistakes. That attitude will get you dead yeah. super quick. Yeah. Super. Quick. Uh, so the other part of that, the, the, the uh, report, which, you mm-hmm. know, Navy does a little bit different than the air force, the sure. recommendations. So it was the things we don't recommend to do, which I loved. It was like, we don't recommend getting rid of the shit hot break. This was not causal. You know, if he had just hit the mode, he'd have been fine. But then it also said, we don't recommend doing an, extended landing pattern okay what is do you know what that is have you is that something? we okay. tested it um in one of my workups and and the history not to to bore everybody um the history of the difference between i mean now air force flies an approach turn as well right but the, the reason the navy's approach turn originally existed was for the old school prop planes going to the ship because they physically couldn't see the landing area so they had to come around in a turn to keep it in sight because straight on the engine and the prop would block where they're landing ah, would block the ship no kidding. so hence that is where the approach turn came from um it used to actually be a level approach turn back in the day and then you know with faster planes and blah blah, blah you know you hire all this so for for all intents and purposes the approach turn is obsolete in naval aviation Okay. So back in 2006, we did a test on the Nimitz where for one set of workups for one month, we were going to do the extended landing pattern, which is, is it's basically straight in. So is what it is. I mean, that's, that's essentially what it is, is you're, you come in, you still go into the break, but then you go, you go way further downwind and then turn and then turn and you set yourself up for a similar landing um like at the ship like you end up level a mile mile and a half behind the ship and fly it down um what we found was the boarding rates weren't any better or worse um the landing grades were no better or worse um but it took physically at the time now this may have changed but it took physically at the time longer to recover the same number of aircraft yeah so the navy goes okay well if we're not getting way less scary passes and we're not getting way better grades. We don't need it. So gone. And we went back to the normal pattern where everybody just comes down and lands and doesn't say a word. Um, that being said, I know they've done tests since because even the FO I flew with just a couple trips ago had mentioned how they had done it in his career too. So they, they keep touching back on this extended pattern. Um, and frankly, with things like PLM and all that, it makes sense because it gives yourself time to set everything up and make sure everything's all locked on and everything's sweet because now you have whatever the distance is a mile, say, I don't know the exact number vice 15 to 18 seconds on a perfect pass. Right. So, um, that, but, but I don't think any of that, um, is the most critical part that we're losing in naval aviation as far as, um, as far as the most dangerous part of what we do around the ship. And I haven't read the report and I apologize. I have not. Um, now they threw you under the bus, like straight up. They said due to visibility in the tower, it limits the ability of the air boss to monitor aircraft during their approach turn aircraft. Like the E2 face challenges locating their interval for determining when to initiate their, they just straight up called you out. It's, it's a fact. It, it, that is a fact. And visibility is a fact. Keeping everybody tighter around the ship. That's a fact because, because the simple fact of the matter is when I was even flying an old Hornet, I had mids, I had the radar and all this. I knew where everybody was in the stack, right? In the E2, I don't. E2s have already, the NFOs have already shut the system down. Like we're done. We're basically just a twin engine prop plane with, now granted, it's gotten better, but I'm just telling you the history of where it came from. The most dangerous part and the part that I think is the, the, the most ironic that never comes up in any of these conversations about safety is if it's daytime, which it was in the case of this F-35, we talk to no one. 
So what you're visualizing is you're taking 12 to 15 dissimilar aircraft and bringing them into a five mile ring around an aircraft carrier that's moving while it's launching 12 to 15 dissimilar aircraft. And nobody is saying a word to anybody. That sounds beautiful. There, there's no talking. Oh, it's amazing. But there's no talking on tower. There's no talking on any of that. Now there's like tack. That. People are talking on tack, right? But not a lot. So it's really, that's the most dangerous part is you spend so much of your energy trying to figure out where your interval is and collapsing the stack. And okay, are they going for it on this? Oh, nope, they're spinning. Hold on. I got to spin myself. There's all this that's done completely what we refer to as zip lip that yeah. it's like, dude, that's the dangerous part. Let the I, people know how to fly the planes. I mean, it's the same thing in civilian aviation, right? I mean, teach people how to fly the plane and let them make their decisions. But I mean, it's all that that's crazy. I mean, there's I can't tell you how many times I was on the top of the overhead stack getting cut off by the Super Hornet tanker because they just didn't care or whatever. And they blew through our altitude and were like, <laughs> we didn't know they were there. Superpower coming eat. through. Yeah. And get out know, of the way, wanted, boys. <laughs> they wanted to get on the ground or on the deck before we did. And it's just like, because they wanted to rip it off at the stern and they didn't want to wait for the E2 that's going to go a mile upwind at best. Um, so, yeah, that's the part that's. Yeah. The pattern itself works very efficiently. It has yeah. for as long Many as years. you can do it. Yeah. yeah. I, I did appreciate the the fact that the recommendations were not knee jerk. You know, it was, sure. you know, especially in today's, even today's Navy, Air Force for sure, you know, we've been talking about, you never do a shit hot break again. Yeah. You know, we're all going to be flying straight ends for the rest of our lives. If one I person appreciate, poops, everybody yeah, wants a diaper. I, I yeah. very much, oh, hold on. <laughs> let me put the disclaimer again Sorry. because holy, yeah. Uh, but I appreciate how, awesome. <laughs> how the Navy did that was, which was like, Hey, look, this was a one-off cost a whole bunch of money. We don't, we don't deny that. However, we're not going to go change everything just based off of one bad mishap. Although to your point, they did change one thing, which is we're going to make it mandatory to use all the automation so that nobody forgets. And it's like, I don't, I don't. I don't know. I don't that. like it. I yeah. don't like it. I mean, I've never flown an F-35. I have done the sim for the magic carpet, um, yeah. an early version. It's awesome. Um, but I go back to if it can fail, it will fail in naval aviation. And then what's your option? If you never teach people how to manually fly these things, then you're either going to divert them or you're going to have a bunch of ejections and it's going to cost a lot of money. Well, that was one of the points that Burr brought up in the report was that he was a uh, what golden nugget or whatever. He was a super J.O. Yeah. Of thing. He, no, he Senior had lieutenant. No, he was a lieutenant, but he had um, he won all the awards. Oh, OK. Like ball flyer and all that stuff. And I'm, I'm, I'm curious how that works when you're flying magic carpet. I mean, I guess if everybody's perfect is it alphabetical i don't know <laughs> then, like they just I mean, and again I, th there's all of these subsets of things and that's a really good point that that makes naval aviation what it is and it's the greenie board it's everybody's passes it's you know being critical of yourself it's holding yourself to that standard it's you know it's that's all part of the culture and when you start peeling back these layers i mean but you know maybe i'm just the old guy that Back we are there. Day, we were better, you know. I yeah. we weren't. I mean, frankly, I looked at the students I taught, and they were a hell of a lot smarter than me. Still are, but I, I don't think this is necessarily. I mean, I don't think it's a jet problem. I think it's just a. We have to be careful with as we progress not to lose the basics, the fundamentals. You know, you you can't you can't jump so far ahead that you forget about flying the aircraft. Like you or I, you know, I was talking to Gonky about this. Old school guys like yourself would look at this and go, how do you do it? Right. Because we feel, you know, you, you feel light in your seat. You don't hear the motor spooling up. You know, you, the, the, the cues you get used to are like, I think the jet's supposed to be doing this. Why is it not doing this? Correct. You know, he commented the jet felt underpowered. Well, those of us that are, are used to modulating our left hand, I mean that you don't, but then on the flip side, we would might be interrupting the system at some point, you know, you might sure. be having trouble adapting. So it's sure. that balance between stuff. 
It's yeah, like, using your experience and not, it's, uh, you know, in the report, it's like VNAF path versus VSI, right? You know, the old school guys will, will spin the VSI down and mm -hmm. uh, vertical speed. And I just push and, for managed decent. Yeah, it's exactly. Easy. Yeah. And go back to sipping on my coffee. Exactly. But until I know it, how to do it when it doesn't and, work. Yeah, until it stops working and then you're like, whoa, wait, why is it doing that? What is mm -hmm. it? Yeah. There's a couple places like when we, when the 737 sim, like people would freak out because the go around, like it wasn't coincident. So you had to actually do some pilot stuff, you know, cause Oof. the jet would, would try to overspeed itself or, or whatever when you hit the sure. auto throttles and it's like, you just fly it, just fly. click everything. Well, you off. see that. I mean, the, the Airbus is the epitome. Uh, I can't tell you how many times as an instructor for the five years that I did it. And I'm sure when I go back, it's going to be the same way where I'm like, Hey, there's two red buttons, click them both. And you have a flying plane. Uh, flying it, plane. Well, but you're physically manipulating the controls, et cetera. Now there's you're two asking more buttons. It you to can... do stuff for you. You're Hey, do me a favor. Yeah. <laughs> but again, there's two more buttons. I could tell you that if you push, you're actually flying it, but we won't get into that publicly. So, um, the, uh, the point I'm getting at is, People get so wrapped up in the automation that they never even think to turn it off, right? Um, but then there's the other side um, that, like the other day, we were coming in and they jammed us on a plane in front of us into Atlanta. Shocking. And I had already started hand flying and the guy missed the high speed and kept going to the next turnoff. And I was like, oh, we might have to go. I was like, hey, you know what? I don't need to work hard. I was tired. I turned the autopilot back on. I'm like, if we're going to have to go around... I'm going to let the system do it and go from there. No big deal, right? And then he cleared the runway and I clicked it back off and land. So it's knowing your aircraft. And and I wonder how much of this is a byproduct of this this poor guy screwed up. And it's a it was on video and the video got leaked. So it's very public, right? Well, it's a very um, public aircraft. Like it's not, it's a high-vis aircraft. It's, correct. It's not a but, legacy Hornet. How much of this is has nothing to do with the pilot, has nothing to do with the aircraft, but has to do with the cutting of the training syllabus, the cutting of the flight hours, the cutting of the comfortableness of being in that aircraft. Yeah. I don't know. You know, yeah, if we start yeah. shrinking down how much we're flying, but if we start shrinking down how much we're training, you lose that comfort. In this case, though, they had been at sea, I think, six months. And there were, he, there were times a, though. Yeah. I mean, I don't know the hours. I did not read it. He so, had like I mean, 60 hours in the last 30 days or something. Like he was flying, okay. he was flying a good bit or 45. He had how many of that was daytime coming in for the overhead vice straight ins at night. It was his first shit, hot break, shit, hot break. It was his first time that's trying time. that. Like it was his first time leading, you know, he was, Hey, I want to be, I want to take the admin lead and lead us back. Correct. And he decided he was going to try this. And you know how it is. The first time they put you in front, it is overwhelming. Like there is a yeah. lot going on when you're trying yeah. to everything you just said about the stack. And he was breaking the deck. So he was first one there. Yep. So he's trying to look cool and all that stuff. And that is the worst way to look cool, by the way, when you do that, when you end up ejecting. You that cannot. Yeah, you cannot look There's cool salvage there. when you send somebody to the hospital. And unfortunately, the LSO was very severely injured um oh really i didn't know that either I need yeah to so well here's the other thing and this this might be touchy this might trigger a couple people in the Ooh, audience but let's do it so there have been rumors and about administrative actions are not publicly releasable sure. right you can FOIA all day long they won't tell you what happened to this guy's wings in fact in the thing i said he was fenabbed of course he was it's a the out. end but then in other sources have come out and said, well, my sources have said that he was phenabbed. He kept his wings, but he'll never fly again. Do you think that's fair for somebody to release that? No. And I don't think it's accurate. I don't, I mean, even if that's the case, first of all, without reading the report, that outcome would shock me. It would, it really would. Um, there's a lot of money in pilot training. <laughs> There's yeah. a lot of time put into that to just write that off and go, Nope, you're done. You're never going to fly again. I don't know. I've what, seen a lot the, of people do a lot of really dumb stuff and get to fly. 
well, I'm, I'm, I'm on the other end of that spectrum, but, um, I'm just saying so. Um, but as far as the question on, is it fair to release it? No, it's none of anybody's business. It's not, it doesn't matter. We live in this world where everybody feels like they should have all the information about the right to know. Yeah. I have have a right right to to know. You don't, nor should you honestly care, learn what can be learned from a situation and move the hell on from it. And that's the, that's the point. That's the, to me, that's the thing is like, we need to figure out what the lessons learned are and how we can apply this. Because I think this applies to airliners, you know, this applies (laughs) to general aviation, children of the magenta. You know, when you, when you have a situation where technology is invasive and you're you're trying to manage all these systems but do it the way you used to do it we have to figure out how to stop the error chain how to break that chain and they made some good suggestions i mean having some kind of alert warning tone that says hey dummy you know you're you're not in what you're supposed you're to you're not I'm in surprised the it doesn't to be honest yeah. with you well I really am. somebody commented he, that he worked for one of the contractor companies and that the air, they wanted to put it in, but the Navy said no. And now the Navy says, yes, we'd like that, please. Okay. Uh, well. So, uh, I, but don't know, but yeah. you know, it always comes down to money and all the other things. So anyway, yeah, I don't well, know. I, I don't I, know. that's, that's a, a dead horse. What do you think about shooting down a balloon, man? I've never been asked to do it. I bet I feel bad for the first pilots. I bet they spent a ton of time mission planning that. Clearly the F-16 guys did not. They're probably still debriefing it right now. (laughs) The F-22 guys are probably still sitting in the debrief talking about Viper guys were like, my bad. (laughs) We'll figure out where that first one went. Yeah. Well, I mean, mean, it went somewhere. 50, 50 shot. I mean, it's it's fine. I I mean, it, Look, we did what we had to do, um, I guess. I don't know. You know, there's so much. It's so easy to sit there and be like, this is ridiculous, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, it, it's so easy in today's society to get worked up on something you think you're an expert at. I'm not. I've never been asked to shoot down a balloon ever in any aspect of my life, aviation or otherwise. Um, <laughs> it's They made the decision. The pilots, the Raptor pilots went out and executed the mission they were given. Bravo. That's our job. That's what we train for. Period. Well, I've, Good for them. I, I maybe I maybe I'm just naive, but I've never seen a, a time period in my life where everything is so hyper partisan and hyper political oh, that everything has to be a political statement. Like everything. I like I talked about it in the F thirty five mishap. Remember the rumors when you and I talked? It was uh, he said, "Oh, oh, my heart. It was my heart." Like. Right yeah. before you ejected, and, and the uh, other I one, think you got that wrong. It was she said that. Well, that Remember, was the other. That was the another. Other was thing. it was a she, and you know, it was just the, the equivalent of hitting a curb with the F thirty five. Like that right. was what these people were saying, and you're just like, can we just Stop. wait? Can we just Stop. wait? Because as we saw, as we saw, the people that were first were wrong, as usual. You as know, the people that are. had to be first, and you know, oh, the balloons were UFOs. Oh, the uh, you know, it's the first female F-35 pilot. Like, dude, you, you, it's free. It is free to not say anything. It is free to just wait for this report, even if it's a year. But how do you free. get clicks? How do you get likes? How do well, people I'm, I'm, that I'm aren't your friends you. like you if like, you don't put that stuff out immediately? We live is, in a society where everybody has a seven second attention span and nobody actually cares about the truth. That's what we've morphed into. So it's whoever can get the most attention for that seven seconds. Well, I, dude, I've been a, like, you read the comments and you know, I'm not just talking to like videos and me, print and news media. I'm talking just in general, like the world, like the comments, like the I comment agree. people will come after me and be like, well, mover, you're obviously a liberal. I'm like, <laughs> hi, my name's mover. Have you met me? <laughs> like <laughs> that reminded me of, the um what was it office space yeah where it's like has anybody ever said you got a case of the mondays it's like calling mover a liberal it's like i reckon you you get punched in the face if you said like that is so like, but I, people just, say stuff like but uh, it, it's, it's just like, it, it's not political like i am intentionally not political on this channel because i don't think it's sure. relevant 
I don't it's, think it's relevant. Like, I don't think people need to or should care what my political beliefs are or are not. not what matter. I think matters is what the truth is and what we can learn from certain situations and, and what kind of information we can bring out. And the political aspect of whether whether we should have let the balloon go, what I don't care. Like, it doesn't matter. It, that's not the it? focus. Yeah, it's it's what were the, the tactical implications of it? Now, it is still funny, though, while, you know, we're on the topic is, you know, people were going to cry about a balloon and forget about the TikTok on their phone. And, you know, they're doing all their dances and stuff and giving the Chinese well, all their information. Likes. Do you have TikTok? No, God, no. no me neither. I can't do TikTok, dude. I don't, I won't, I will not give the Chinese any more information than they already have. Correct. Correct. I mean, and that's the point is it really is like, See, here's a troll right down. here. If you know there's multiple, like when you can't pronounce the name, um, you know there's multiple different types of intelligence. It's not just taking pictures. <laughs> I disagree. I feel like we're actually shrinking down our types of intelligence as a society. So I, well, maybe there's a, less. <laughs> it's an oxymoron. You know, they probably they probably got to the we didn't get any information because there is no information. You guys are yeah. a bunch of idiots. Yeah. Like, it was. We were talking about that the other day. Um, we got into a UFO discussion. Don't ask me why. You know how it is when you fly <laughs> long flights. And aliens. You're just like, so you like stuff? And like, I was like, has anybody thought that maybe they've come down and look and they're like, you could have it, bro. We're good. We're moving yeah. on. <laughs> no, they locked <laughs> all doors. yours, man. Yeah, they're locking their doors as they're flying by. Well, you know that. And and dude, that's it's funny. I'm I'm writing the sci-fi book right now, right? Yeah. I'm trying. I'm trying. I'm not smart enough, dude. I'm just not smart enough. Like to come up with all the, the physics and the, what an alien, like it's just, it's tough. Like, I don't know how people we do talked it. about that. When you told me you were going to write it, I was like, nah, man, I'm going to stick with just yeah, it's tough. aviation fiction. It's tough, man. People it's, are smarter than that. They're going to call me out. They already well, do call me out. I could just straight up make it up. And yeah. I guess that would be fiction. But I, I, I try not to. And I, I, I've actually I've got I've gone to the depth of uh, there's this new Kerbal space flight. I'm like, I might download this. It's these little cartoon dudes that are building rockets to go to the moon. And I'm like, I might download that just to see if I can learn something, because I don't know enough. <laughs> yeah, I would like Elon to send me to space, but uh, sadly, he, he will not written you back yet. <laughs> he has not written me. He's still mad at me because, well, every time I do an Ace Combat video, I mention is elon musk so um i guess whatever it's um, funny anyway it's anyway funny. what right. else is I, going I, on man what else is what's exciting i missed the first part i want to what's going on in your life exciting. what's happening oh no i i got i love um, that picture of your dogs by the way it's amazing yeah Over that was shoulder. a that was a christmas present from That's the girlfriend awesome. uh i got this Please do not. Ooh, that's a good point. That's actually um, the basis of all my books. <laughs> yeah. I need that. <laughs> that's seriously. Yeah. So um, that's cool. let's, let's see. Still don't have sponsors for a race car, although Greg although, sent me a, a check for 150 bucks to go racing. <laughs> nice. Yeah. You're getting there, man. Every dollar yeah. counts. I appreciate that. Um, what else? Uh, Boomer says, I don't have a girlfriend, by the way. She's going to be mad. Ooh, I don't care. Why? It Boomer, if you're, if you're gonna, first of all, if you, you need to be able to spell it before you can say it, it's not as effective when you can't use. You do not equipment. have a girl fire. In. I do. Not, she, that's well, a fact. She does have a fire. In, but, yeah. <laughs> that's a whole nother. That's a different. That's life. That's a different Boomer. video. That's a there. different video. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's see what else. Uh, that's it, man. Life is 40. That's what this yeah, is. Yeah, welcome. Now. Welcome to your 40s. Sucks. It does. Stuff's going to randomly start hurting now. It's oh, awesome. dude, that's been since I was 30. <laughs> so I mean, well, it's going to get worse. It's, it's, <laughs> I mean, I don't when have When you can wake up and try to figure out how you twisted your ankle from sleeping, <laughs> you're not uh, cool. Like uh, uh, Boomer Cora, you think we should just ban him? No, I like what he's saying. It seems that, like it's that, very that we're so old. Now he's yeah. taking you out with me. Boom, Boomer Core eighty four. Yeah. So what are you five years younger than me there, champ? Like he's a, he's a year younger than me. Yeah, it's and coming, bro. 
Yeah. Yeah. Okay. One more anyway. year, buddy. Uh, <laughs> oh, uh, man. Well, what do you what, think about, um, Go ahead. Sorry. I, I think it's cool that it spells sex. Does it? Yeah. Well, if you, if you make oh, the yeah. five uh, S. See, comments like that make me think you don't have a girlfriend more than anything else because you can see stuff like that. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> but I know you do. So, um, I, you know, it's honestly, I don't care if you know I do or not. That's the funny part is like, I know, but it doesn't change never, anything. It doesn't like it doesn't anything. Um, like a Hooters the, girl. Uh, it's probably better if you think I don't. That's true. <laughs> I get more that's tips. Uh, what else is going on? You doing anything else fun? Have nope. you driven the Corvette lately? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Weather's weather been be it's been hot, summer. dude. It's been 80s. Yeah. Oh no, just I know. Did Mardi Gras. I, just, I just flew all around the country and I went from like 80s to 30s. It was ridiculous. Like, um, what else? I'm still trying to buy a Raptor, but nobody will sell me one for MSRP. So they're still doing that. Yeah. God. So I think I'm going to give up. I think I'm just going to quit. Keep my truck, and that's how it's. Gonna I don't be. know why you want a Raptor. I don't know why. I think it's the hunt, honestly. Um, you know what I mean? It's like I want the deal, and then I want them. Then I want to be like, no, nah, I'm good. You should get but. your dealer's license and then go on the other side and just <laughs> know. start know. Wombat's used car lot. What I like more than anything is when a when a car dealer, like a salesperson, explains to me the process, and I'm like, bro, I've bought and sold more cars than you have. Like, how long have you been working? There? Trust me. <laughs> but yeah. Um, Cool, man. Yeah. Well, good. How's uh, Gonky doing? I haven't talked to him. Is he good? Hold on. Oh. Yes, that's a comment. That wasn't a question. I thought it was a question. Um, so Gonky and I are still fired. Okay. That all's going on. So there's that. He's, are he's, you still ticking? We don't talk about this, but like, are you still ticking towards? Until June, the yes. finish line? Until June. And then okay. I'll be two years short. And that's that's okay. all I'll have to say about that. Okay, we'll talk about that. Yeah. Um, um, but he's still he's still doing okay. We did that one. Go check it out. I already did that one. Tractors in that one. I already know that guy. Uh, yeah, Gonky's doing great. I've been trying to get him to do the DCS thing. Which do you have a place you could go to do DCS? Because you could do like he really wants you to be our paddles. Where would I go? I mean, there's got to have to find some nerd with with I'm sorry, a simulator <laughs> enthusiast. <laughs> DCS. <laughs> I say it in with one hour, care. twelve minutes, I'm, forty-five seconds is I'm when the full triggering too. started. Look, I, look, I got a nerd wheel and everything. Look, it's got a shifter. Like, if somebody could, and and I I trusted them to go to their place and not want to like wear my skin after it's a leap, done, of, leap of faith. Of it's just a it leap is. of faith. Um, the good then, news is, I mean. You're a very pretty man, Wombat, but not pretty enough for somebody to put you in their basement. I disagree. I think I'm basement material. Don't tell uh, me that. Look, there you go. Sammy the Ditch Doctor. <laughs> With a name like that. <laughs> He's already got the ditch built for you. Probably big enough to fit you in. I think I know who that is. So. Puts the lotion on its um, skin. No. Um, the, uh, I would oh, do like it. Somebody else did it too. <laughs> I would do it if... Uh, if, if it, to be your LSO. I need a little warm up though. That's You'd have to my LSO teach me. Again. It's easy. Okay. You'd have to teach me how to do the boat thing. Cause That's it's easy. been a minute since I did FCLPs. Yeah. It's easy. 2013. Last time I've Oof, done that. 10 years, 10 years, 10 years, a decade. Yeah. That's all right. It's been not, not much longer since I've done it. I stopped doing boat stuff in 2014. So, um, Hey, what else should I do? Does anybody have suggestions on for me? I got I got stuff going on. What else should I get into? Write more books. So I know what they're going to suggest. Where's your YouTube channel? No, it's right here. I'm renting it. <laughs> Where's my money? It's very, it's very oh, cheap. Hey. Oh, dude. Oh. We forgot. Uh oh. Um, how do I do this, Wombat? I don't know. Well, first off, there's that. Yeah. Keep them entertained. I got to go find. That's we got really, we, we got really a cover close. reveal. We forgot about your new cover and your book and all that stuff. Well, it's because I hopped on. I figured, you know, but yeah, that's coming May second. Tell us two. about it. 
Um, it's a book about made up stuff with some of the characters you may have liked from the first book. Some Why is it that on your website? What is wrong is with you? Website. It is Isn't not. It? No, yeah. that's because my website, um, God, dude. my website, no wonder you don't sell person books. is Come my on, wife man. and she's been a little busy lately. Um, Hold on. I'd love somebody to help me make my website nicer for not much money. Um, <laughs> so if there's anybody out there that wants to work on a website and make it look professional, um, the, uh, it's coming. What That's do you think saying. of the cover? Hold on. We're about to get okay. there. Right. Uh, I'll tell you what else I've been doing is editing three hours worth of stuff where I had all of the F5 guys and all the A4 guys from Top Gun for the first movie. Uh-huh. Boy, that's a that's a lot, but it was an awesome. That's it. Hold on, that's all I'm there trying is to... to it. I just don't have an artistic flair for like, like your website looks fantastic. Uh, it really does. Oh, thank Mine you. just looks okay. Mine looks like somebody who writes books that doesn't really care about. Anything Did you send stuff. me the cover? Do you want me to? Uh, I'm trying to. I can make this way easier, dude. You're making this way harder. But you're making it. the people. I found win. it. I found it. Did you find the good one? Yeah. The most there. recent one. There. That's the. Um. I do think that we should. Somebody just commented on it. So switching gears because the poop chairs are so. Um, I think we should auction them off. To either a charity or to your. Um, your racing sponsorship. I've got two of them and they're notorious now. So that is that it? That's that's it. Yeah. That's it. Oh. Hey, my my employer is calling. Is that good news or bad news? That's your be good news. Airlines calling? Are you gonna have to go? Should we shut this down? No, no, no. No, I'm good. No, I'm good. I'm all good. All um, right, so after, wait, so yeah. on, let, me, let me read this to you. Okay. After his last deployment with the wall bankers that resulted. Oh, dude, you can't say that. That's a what? spoiler. Well. It resulted in a spoiler. Navy pilot Jack Rattler Owen is ready for a fresh start. Now flying the FA-18 C Hornet with the Warhawks on the West Coast. He's preparing for his next deployment, enjoying spending time with his girlfriend, Sandy. <gasps> That's his girlfriend now. They were girlfriends in the first one, sort of. Girlfriend, boyfriend. Okay. But yes, continue. Did you even read Treason Flight? I'm just kidding. It was a, it was a, it was it was a long time ago. There's a lot of stuff going on. <laughs> However, Rattler's problems are far from over. Wasn't it? Like, it's almost two years now. It is. Well, it'll be far. just shy, yeah. His new squadron mate doesn't like him. Oh, well. He misses the camaraderie. <laughs> Wait, is this fiction? I'm just kidding. Yeah, he shared with his former squadron, and before long... He's headed off for combat deployment and life at sea. But a threat even greater than flying in enemy territory looms. Rattler has unwittingly thwarted a sinister plan hatched by a secret organization driven by money, power, and greed that could take down the entire United States. Wait, there's no periods. This just says us. And the entire us. And they'll stop at nothing to make him pay. But as they'll soon find out, there's nothing more dangerous than a man with nothing else to lose. Left No, no, sorry. They'll soon find out that there's nothing more dangerous than a man with nothing left to lose. Coming May 2nd, 2023. Page flip not enabled. Wordwise not enabled. Enhanced type setting not enabled. <laughs> not enabled. See all the details. <laughs> You've seen them all. That's it. That's, That's all the details. Doesn't say how many pages it is. How many pages is it? Well, it's because we don't know yet because we're still doing the editing. So. so there's nothing back here. <laughs> there's nothing back there. So. Oh, okay. Well, that's, uh, that's... So, yeah, that's uh, and that is in an OB10. Yes. In a world. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so that's May 2nd. You could pre order it uh, now digitally. Um, yeah, that's true. I'm going to do the audiobook. Nope. In that's a right world. Ahead. In a world, you'd actually do good. You have the, I mean, I don't know if your Louisiana public school reading could do well at it, but, but <laughs> the voice is there. You just it have to spend a lot us. of time on the editing. It says us. That's okay. That was not the part I was referring to, <laughs> but that's fine. 
So yeah, I'm excited, man. I went to private uh, school anyway, by the way. So. The uh, the editors like it a lot. <laughs> the second editor was the same editor from Treason Flight, and she was blown away. She's like, "There better be a third. And I was like, oh, "Here we go." Don't, isn't that awesome about books? Like, you don't even get the second one out. And the people, the people have spoken. Wombat. <laughs> Sorry, it's already been contracted out. It'll, in, a world, in a world, in a world where wombat. We'll stop at nothing to write a third book. What I wanted to do is do like one of those cool video trailers for it. But I don't know anybody who wants to do that cheap either. So No, you Be need to find some DCS people. Well, and there was one guy and he was super nice and, and he and he did it, but he he admitted he's like, I'm an amateur and you know it's and I get it. And it's but it would be cool or just something from Treason Flight. But the problem with Treason Flight is uh there's no, I guess there's no E2. Because you have to be able to read a book to do yeah. an audio book. Wombat That's would the need problem. an audio book to do the audio book. Yeah, exactly. Indeed. I'd have to record it for Gonky. <laughs> <laughs> so messed up. But uh, he's such a pretty guy, though. I mean, what's not to love? He about, is right? the he half agent Tom everything. Cruise. He, he, or he's the, what, Lou Diamond Phillips from that other movie. But There you um, go. But yeah, so I'm excited about it, man. The, uh, the editors like it. Um, nobody else has read it yet. So unlike Treason Flight, um, my wife hasn't even done it. So we're going to have some advanced reader copies. We did a cover reveal, which was pretty cool. Some guy won a lot of swag on my social media. So follow that. Um, we'll probably do another one as it gets closer. But I like it. I'm proud of it. I mean, I I read it. You know, you know how it is. Sometimes you finish it. <laughs> it would be. It would be. That's and then Rattler said, dude, dude, Rattler said, dude, <laughs> dude, Rattler just kicked that guy, dude. Oh, oh dude, come man. on, man. <laughs> uh, that's funny. That's funny. Yeah, let's get a movie made of one of our books. Can we do that? Because then I would worry about a lot. All right. Of listen, he, he's he's so upset about this. He's posted it twice. Just a ching. I don't I can't <laughs> use it. Careful. <laughs> just a too bad didn't use drone trailing a bunch of lanyards and tangle solar panels. Drive motors, drain energy slowly, drawing it down. Nope. Had to blow it, drop it in the ocean. I feel like an astronaut in the ocean reading this. I. And dude, this is cancer. What? Uh, thank you, Blue Rex. So when I read things like that, and this is, remember, put up the disclaimer. Um, I'm yeah. saying this, but like, this is where my brain goes and, and I'm, this is not my channel. It's a mover's channel. Don't get mad at him. Get mad at me. But when I read comments like that send everything to the anthrax. <laughs> send the anthrax there. I think like that, um, old school scene, was it old school where they're like, we are now dumber. No, it was, or what was it? Was it Billy Madison? One of those were like, he rants on, some, it was Billy Madison. Like he rants on an answer and then they're like, we we're all oh, at no point in this. Listening. Yeah. Yeah. I'm making any semblance make, of a point. <laughs> mercy heart on heart your soul. Your soul. <laughs> yeah. That's how I feel when I read some of the, co and I get it, dude. I like, we message each other. I guarantee you there's things I send you. You're like, what in the hell were you trying to say? And That's you just, just don't reply until I fix it. And then I'm like, oh, okay. My bad. Yeah. I, yeah. I, but that's how I feel. So, it's like, remember the, uh, this is old from college humor where it was Google. They had the skit where it was things people search for on Google and Google yeah. was like this dude sitting at a desk. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's, that's what it reminds me of. And dude, that trees and flight book is so sick. Like, dude, whoa. I wish somebody would write that on Amazon right now. That'd be great. <laughs> um, that'd be awesome. Kegels. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to start that rumor now. The Eagle community loves it. They do. That's <laughs> their number one exercise. Wait, is it? So can I ask a dumb Air Force question? I'm going to. So uh, There's the Strike Eagle, which is two seat, right? Yeah. And then there's the single seat. So why is it when I fly with guys, they're like, oh, I flew Strike Eagles. They're very adamant that they flew Strike Eagles. Different communities. Yes. No, I know they are. What does the other eagle call itself? The eagle. Eagle jet. Albino. So it's just, which one are the ones that you're making fun of more? Oh, the albino. The eagle jet. Yeah. The, the, air the, air the air Zamboni air drivers. Air. Yeah. Because they're, they're not a pound for air to ground. All they do is air to air. 
Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Because most of the ones that are like, yeah, I mean, I'm a oh, well, we make fun guy. of Strike They're... Eagle guys because they well, need the Wizzo. True. Like they they need somebody with them at all times, so yeah. they can't function well, as a single. Some people unit. need that. That's okay. Yeah, that's where I say I'd rather have the extra gas. That's just, it's just two different forms of. Like I I I well, but at least it's at least dependent. in the Eagle to Strike Eagle, it's two different missions. I mean, look at the Echo to Foxtrot. It's the same dang thing. True. Put a seat. Well, like the Marines <laughs> did it better because they made like a Fac A mission when they. You well, know, and some would D argue model. that's what the F model does more than the E model. But anyway. Um, anyway, so yeah. So book's coming out May 2nd. Um, I'm going back to teaching. Did I tell you that? I told you that. Yeah. You yeah, told me, but did you tell them? No. What's the, there, There's significance on 5223, isn't it? There right. is. Yeah. So every time, every time, both times I release a book, the one time I have published a book in my life and soon to be second, I like to make it a date that means something to me. Um, so Trees in Flight got published on May 11th, 2021. May 11th was the day that I got commissioned in the Navy. And it just happened to be, as, as Mover will agree, you're supposed to publish things on Tuesdays. It's an old school thing, right? It's, Tacos that's and an books, old holdover. Dude. Tacos yeah. and books. So in 2021, when Mover was helping me with this, there just happened to be a May 11th on a Tuesday. So to me, it just rang true. Like, that's going to be the day we do it. Um, so I looked at this time and I'm like, okay, here are the, the Tuesdays in May. With um, Maury. And I wrote off the Tuesday where Jack Carr's book's coming out because I don't need to compete with that guy because he's. You should get into charcuterie <laughs> like him. Is that what he does? Isn't um, that what he does? Cutting boards where you put the, the does, snacks on there and sell it to people? Um, so May 2nd, for some reason, rang a bell. And I bet if I talk about May 2nd long enough, somebody's going to know what happened on May 2nd. It's, it's a very famous date. Doso de Mayo. <laughs> no. Um, but May 2nd was the day that I started dating my wife. Is she real? Cause they've, they don't know. She's in fact, real, um, based on my lack of sleep from the two children that she has given me. That's a, that's a fact. So, um, so on the anniversary of the day that we started dating and something else happened that day, which I'll let somebody comment on. That is why we're doing it on May 2nd. Why are you so secretive? Why does everybody else have to comment on stuff? Why can't you just like tell that. me? Just oh man. Is this somebody how you write was... you write all these hangers? Yeah, actually. That was actually one of the comments that the editor said on the last edit. She's like, she's like, I love your stories, but my God. Is that you like know, your imaginary car in your picture there? Oh, Zach? Bazinga. Oh, oh, you know what though? You got that from me. I take credit for that. That's how I write. Uh, you do. You do. But she's like, you know how to finish. There you go. Kent, got it. Uh, so the other night I had a dream I was flying a Strike Eagle. Really? Yeah, I don't know why. Write a book about it. Do you know enough about it to write a book about it? Do you ever have a dream where you, and, you, <laughs> and then you, and then you, and then, and then, oh, here you go. This one's for you, Wombat. Do either of you use beta readers? If so, who and how many? I no. Um, yes, no. Uh, do you? I uh, yes. Oh yes. Oh, you do. Oh yes. Very important to me. I need. I, tell, I need the. I need the encouragement as I go. I'm very needy. Uh, yeah, I don't. I just write my story um, because I I genuinely appreciate the time. That was the answer, by the way. Um, I genuinely isn't that weird that that Did was. Did you day kill Bin Laden? Were you there? Moving on. Um, I genuinely appreciate very much the amount of uh, time and money that somebody will put in to purchase one of my books. Um, I do not take that lightly. You know, the seven ninety nine or whatever format you get. Um, I know you had to work for that money. Um, and then you're going to use your time, which is the most valuable asset we have, I believe, um, to read it or listen to it. I put a lot of effort into that. That being said, it's my story. And um, not everybody's going to like the way I write my story. But 
for me to be true to the people reading it, I have to write it my way. Now, people will read it. What are we talking about? Some, some I'm so things. lost right now. Readers, ghost readers or whatever. You can't have about. beta readers because you're going to write it your way. What I'm going to write mean? it my way. And then once it's done and edited, just get it'll go better, out. Just get better, better beta readers. I'm not a man with a lot of friends. All right. Let's just be honest. I did not meet Gonky on May 2nd, but I met him shortly after May 2nd because we oh. met a long time ago in API. Uh, I was doing an incentive flight in a strike eagle. I was flying somebody in an incentive flight. So the whistle was gone and I was just flying some random person for an incentive so, flight. <laughs> this is definitely your dream. <laughs> your dream of flying a strike eagle is still involved in not. the Wizzo, which is fantastic. <laughs> That's accurate. That's yeah, my uh, subconscious matches with my conscious. That's that's a fact. That's Look at this guy. All my readers are alphas. <laughs> are we? This is, that's funny. So, but I am going to do an advanced reader copy. So, uh, y'all need to stop harassing right. me. It's hard writing books. I've been it busy. Is. It takes a lot of time. It takes some time. It takes like mental stuff. It's hard when you're doing sci-fi. Dude, that was a big mistake. Like, I love the idea, but it has bogged me down so much. Because right now, I'm so mad that I could really write a good vengeance book. Like, I could, mm -hmm. I could vengeance some hey, people weird. right now. Yeah, <laughs> I could really vengeance some people, as we talked about early on. And Speaking make some, of, there's a great yeah. book about vengeance coming out on May 2nd. You should go buy it. <laughs> in a world where Wombat it's writes a vengeance book. literally book. in the story. Yeah. He wants no direction is what they're basically saying. Uh, oh, here you go. Yeah. Uh, fun fact. No, um, the if you're if you're if you're looking at it from behind, so to speak, uh, the left second from the left and far right tails are rudders. The second from the right is affixed. And I can tell you the story on why that is if you really care, but nobody cares. Um, it has. I believe flaps and ailerons, but don't quote me on that. We long. have yeah, just flaps and ailerons. Ah, we lost it. Okay. So, yeah, why don't we do a mover promo code? Promo code. Do I still get paid the full amount when that happens? No, you have to. Oh, dang it. We could do that. That's fine. I don't care. Uh, it's it's harder to write a book money. by far. Is it harder to fly or write a book? Oh, write a book, hands down. Are you kidding me? Flying's easy. Hey, so they asked me this question, and I don't know. So what do you think? I was kind of surprised about that. I'm like, is there something else Boeing has got in the hopper? I need. I was going to actually text Nasty about it. Um, but I was like, is there something else that Boeing's got in the hopper that we don't know about yet? Yeah. Because the they're not just going to... Okay. Let me ask that question again. Is there something Hornet-like that... <laughs> I oh, see. I, I only hopper. read the headlines, but I thought this was just the well. If India doesn't buy them, like they're just threatening, they're right. trying to like this is posturing. Is this really a thing? Because look at the Viper, dude. The Viper's never. Well, dude, look at the A10. I mean, oh, they never they minutes. shut down the A10. I mean, now the A10's so bad that they're flying parts to failure and then cannibalizing it un intentionally. So, Jesus, A10 won't oh, be around much longer. Why don't we learn? We're so dumb. So dumb. Absolute vengeance flight. <laughs> Ooh, there you go. It's a collaboration. 6040, since two of those words are my title. Wombat, <laughs> serious question. How much would a signed copy run me? Uh, it'll come out in all copies, and it'll likely end up being the same as Treason Flight on my website for a signed copy, whatever that currently is. Um, and that's honestly, that's based on how, um, how much it costs to get the books as mover can attribute. Like, the, the thing that I learned about this world that's very interesting is I thought like a hardcover book would make me the most money and it makes me the least money because of how much it costs to make the book. So, um, and on this, the only reason I can't give you a, a legitimate hard answer is because the book, the, the number of pages hasn't been set yet. It will be here soon. And that dictates the price. But um, also Mover and I had this discussion when Treason Flight came out, Amazon was not publishing hardcovers. They're only doing ebooks and paperbacks. And now they're doing hardcovers. So Treason Flight is published through Ingram Spark. Vengeance Flight in the hardcover will be uh, through Amazon. So I'm hoping the cost is the same. I, you know, it, trust me, the, the bottom line is I can tell you guys, like, I'm not doing this to make money on each individual sale. I do it in hopes that 
people like my story and it gets education out there and it pays tribute to some maybe not fiction versions of the book. There's one in this next one um, that I think you'll like that pays fiction to somebody or pays tribute to somebody who lost their life. And uh, it's a very, very accurate renditioning. Um, but also it's, you know, the only way you're really making money off this is if somebody wants to make a movie or a series out of it. Or you yeah, I got my royalty it. check for uh, my hardcover. It was 37 cents. Oh, nice. It, I love every time I get a royalty check for under a dollar because I email it to or I text it to my wife and I'm like, aren't you happy who you picked as a spouse? This can be all yours. All of this can be yours. The past yeah. riches. Well, I love that because so. people think, um, and this is towing a line here, but I, I will outright say it. Uh, if you are a self-published author, more than likely you're not making a whole bunch of money. Correct. I've got 11 books, 13 are actually, cause there's 13 titles because you know, you get the 11 novels, the one Spectre origin, and then the, the ebook series and stuff. Maybe I should do an origin. You could, but I mean, I, the, the thing that has haunted me throughout my military career is idiots that <laughs> see that you write books and you mention the book every now and then, and somehow you are getting rich writing books. Correct. You don't. I don't. No. I, you get now, rich with YouTube channels. Yeah, no, you don't <laughs> that, that either. Don't start that either. Because that's the other thing these idiots say. I'm totally kidding. I'm but, totally but kidding. I had to do it. it was this too perception is reality. People are like, oh, he's a rich author. It's like, no, dude, I'll show you my 37 cent royalty checks <laughs> or, you know, because I don't know. Correct. I, I wish it were true. No, I do too. I here's the true. reason. Here's the reason why um, it's not true. If it was true, I would not have a day job at yeah. all. Yeah. Period. I would just be writing full time books. <laughs> yeah. But even I don't think even the the traditionally published people are making that kind of money. Like no, I think, I think I, where it comes is in the series or movie for sure. If no, you public do it speaking. Right. Public speaking now, is where the money comes. Well, and I would, Nasty and I talked about that too. I, I wouldn't mind getting into that because I think that'd be fun to do. Dude, but, they're, make, they're paying between five grand and a hundred grand per speaking session, depending on who you are and, and where you're with. Why don't we start a public speaking company? What am I going to talk about? The same stuff you talk about here. I don't, I don't, I'm not very polished, Wombat. Mm, I am, aren't I? Somebody would want to hear me talk. Yeah. Tell me they would. Mm. Um, but yeah, it's. I think it's off of. Um, I think it it starts with if you get a if you get a series, um, or a movie. That's a it, as long as you don't get totally raked over the coals by the the company buying your series as lawyer. Like if you have a solid contract, you can make some money there. What are we talking about? And then making money as an author. Um, and then it becomes a name thing, right? So guys like, you know, a series, it's like a Netflix, Amazon type thing. Like if it goes grand. there, hundred grand, that's all you're getting paid as an author for the yeah. rights. Yeah. hundred grand hmm. on uh, maybe less. I mean, depending that's, on... more, that's more than I'm making with trees. Well, so no, I'm so not wouldn't... saying it's, I'm just saying you're I not like no. breaking in millions. Usually the way these deals are, are structured is they'll pay you for the rights. Mm -hmm. And then sometimes they'll buy it just to shelve it. They won't even do anything with My it. My wife was telling me about that. And I was yeah. like, I need to start some sort of social media campaign telling people that I am more than happy to sell them the screen but, rights to but, Treason Flight for see, six the, months. <laughs> but then the thing is, so they'll option it. They'll pay you, you know, and, and it could be low. I mean, if it's if it's a, a one book deal, it could be like 50 grand, 30 grand, 10 grand. Oh, then goodness. if they make it now, you know, it's on the production budget mm -hmm. and it's uh, Netflix is tougher. Cause usually like with a film, like an actual movie, they would put you like, okay, once they cover their costs, you get like a, a percentage sure. or points is what they call it. Okay. Based off like a of royalty. Essentially? Yeah. It's essentially a royalty. Okay. Um, but up front, you know, you're just, you're just giving them the rights. They're optioning it. So it's, it's not, unless you're part of the production, then you can make more money as a producer 
as a writer, Consultant. you won't write, Definitely. they won't let you write episodes cause you're not WGA or, or the writer's guild or whatever. So, you know, there's a lot of other parts, like it is incredibly hard to make money and to even get your project moving forward. You know, like Jack Carr, Chris Pratt, Chris Pratt, hundred percent, Chris Pratt. If the people don't know that story, yeah, I say that all the time. I think Jack Carr, frankly, is a, at least from what I, I think I'm a pretty good judgment of people's character. I think he's a great dude. Um, I do. I think he's a genuine guy who had a plan. I like the fact that he was a SEAL and had a plan to do something with his skill set because that's a tough skill set to directly bring into the civilian world, unlike ours. It's very easy to bring our skill set into the civilian world. Um, I have a lot of respect for that. But if that never happened, I don't know if we know who Jack Carr is, frankly. I really yeah. don't. And well, he probably I mean, said that's, that too. That's, that's a like huge anything else. Leap. That's not, that's like. That's like anything else. I mean, that, yeah. that's, that's, I mean, Jocko, I mean, look at the brand he's built. Look at yeah. the brand, the, the brand he built. What I'm, uh, the point being though, is that it is not a guaranteed formula. It is a lot of work. And I saw a comment that said, well, you self publish, you make more money as a percentage. You do sure as a percentage of royalties you do, but not necessarily net or gross because it's on you, man. It is yep, on every 100%. book you sell is because you drove engagement to your book. Um, and I think a that lot is of people, why when, when people ask me, I, I'm honest with them. People ask me like, Oh, well, how did you get your books to sell? How did you sell as many as you did? How did you get 400 and whatever it is ratings on Amazon? And I go, I can tell you one specific reason that anybody knows about trees and flight. And it's you and your channel. hundred percent. Yeah, and they don't even, 100%. my channel doesn't even buy my books. Like, it's not like a steady. <laughs> but my you know, point being is right. just having that connection. That's if I could have one physical connection through writing, it's yeah. you. Yeah. Other than that, nobody knows Treason Flight's even a book. Well, I, I mean, there'd be a handful of people that bought it because they're like, what is that funny looking UFO plane? Or as my son said this morning, the plane with the surfboard on top, which I was like, well, that would have been a lot more fun of a mission. <laughs> was a little jealous that he could come up with that. So there yeah, it's a very interesting there world. There you go. <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. It's because you never put your books up. Oh no, because I, I get in trouble now. <laughs> like the, the idiots that believe that I'm out making millions of dollars writing books think that if I talk about my books, suddenly that I'm. Does it matter anymore? <sighs> I, I don't know. Honestly, okay. I don't, I don't know where we're at. Uh, there's going to be. I can tell you this at some point, the, the truth will present itself. And yes. I think that w when people hear the story, they're going to, there's going to be gonna two be. camps. There's going to be the people that think that, well, it's going to be like everything else I do, right? People are going to think I'm an idiot or people are going to be like, holy crap, I can't believe this happened. I agree. And I know the story and I agree. I think the camp that's like, I can't believe that happened is going to be far bigger in my opinion. Personally. <sighs> I do. I can tell you it's been a rough year, man. I know. We're going on a year. It'll be a year. It'll here. be a year next month. I've been month. here with you. Remember? Yeah. yeah. I care. I have a big heart. Yeah. Uh, all right. Let's wrap this so up because it's been like two out hours. How to make millions writing books. Um, how not to crash into the back of a ship. What else did we do? Uh, how to shoot balloons. I did. I missed that part, but you can fill me in later. Um, I'll watch it. They did it right. Shoot it with a nine X. It's fine. Yeah. Without a warhead. Right. <laughs> it's too easy. I can't. Yeah, we just, we just make, easy. <laughs> why do we just make stuff up? Like <laughs> we just go, uh, I heard it was without a warhead because I didn't see this, uh, independence day style explosion. Like, have you ever seen a, a, a 20 pound warhead explode? <laughs> Yeah, it looks like a bottle rocket. Actually, it's, it even, it's not even that. It's not even that. It flies like a bottle rocket, and then it explodes like a bottle rocket that didn't explode. Dude, when I shot my nine, my nine mic, it came off the rail, and I thought it went straight into the water. <laughs> like I, because it does that down, th and I was like, "Yep, Ooh. yep." You're like, "That's not Ooh. good." Yeah, I was Hope like, "There's not any whales Ooh. down there." Ooh, uh, well, 
so much for that. And then it took off and hit the the Lou two, and I was like, oh, that's it, dude. I I love missile shoot days. So I could tell you this story. We did a four ship of Hornets. Yeah, this is a funny story. Um, what did we drop? What's the? I already forgot what the the J sow. Oh, four okay. J sows, right? We're gonna drop. Every pilot in the division had transitioned from another community other than directly from the Hornet. On the first run-in, no drop out of all four. <laughs> it was awesome. I was like, well, that about some on tack. I'm like, that about sums up the uh, Naval Aviation Transition Community Program right there. <laughs> and we about faced him. But it was cool. Chase out, whatever. Yeah. Um, anyway, so, dude, you're doing good. Things are, I have a vibe I'm going to share with you. I like vibes. Good things are on the horizon for you. Like something that's going to blow you the F away. Like you're just going to be like, dude, dude, I almost made a girlfriend comment. I'm sorry. I apologize for the thoughts in my head. (laughs) Again, it's the fact that that's all that's in your head makes the viewers think you don't actually have one. I'm a perpetual 13 year old. It doesn't (laughs) matter. 40, 50, 13. It's always the same for me. As you should be. Anyway, but continue. I do think. Sorry, I I, I can't ruin I the moment. I I just have. I this ruin vibe. the moment. Yeah, I have this vibe that something big. Don't don't get all. Hold on. Don't get all freaking on me. I do something big is going to happen, and it's one of those things that's going to happen in your life that ten years after it happens, you're going to look back. I saw that, or you're going to look back. And go, that was a pivotal point. Yeah. I have that vibe. Yeah. It's happening, well, man. It's we'll coming. See. Be ready for it. We'll Keep see. your options open and be ready for it. We'll see. We'll see. I'm just uh just hanging out, doing doing what we do. I uh, dude, five hundred people watching this, that's amazing. Is that good? I don't know. It just seems like a lot UFO. of people. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, that's why I got all the people like, it's just a weather balloon. Why are you doing this propaganda? called clickbait welcome to the it's not a clickbait somebody I'm said kidding. it was a ufo <laughs> like that was one of the stupid comments like oh it's I a know. ufo because the first thing that came out the the state department <laughs> guy goes up there and he's like well i'm i don't we don't know what it is so we're, we're not saying it's not a uap and then the you know the the fringe folks are like oh my god we're shooting down the aliens you know it's the alien uber got shot there's right. two problems with that statement one people are gullible and two, the people in charge that actually have a voice to talk in this country are so scared to say the wrong thing that they say the wrong thing. It's like, just say it, man. People aren't, look, people want to hear the truth. Just say it. Like, and if you don't know, be like, I don't know. Wait, have you like, ever seen the uh, Sheriff Grady? And uh, he's uh, um, it's in Florida. Yes. One of the counties yes, in Florida. He does the press conferences and he's like, you know, he he did he, he did gangster things and got gangstered, you know. Like he has all these these one liners, <laughs> but he's like direct. He's like, "Here's the guy, and he was a dumbass, and he got shot, and he's dead." Yep. Yep. Like he got himself Grady dead. Grady Jug that. Polk County. There you go. Yeah, yeah. Yep. I um, and again, we need more of that in this world. But the problem is, is that we're in a yeah. society that's so afraid to say things because people get so butthurt uh, when you say things, yeah. and it's like, dude, just how dare you? we're a product of our own environment at this point. And it's like, knock it off, man. Just be honest. Like just dude. It... So I, can I tell a funny story? Yeah. Can I tell a funny always, story about, always. I about saw somebody I mention uh, a sheriff that is now in jail. I wouldn't use that sheriff as an example, but go on. So, um, you know that I'm a captain at an airline. You also know that I was an instructor for a good amount of time. Um, at, Look at me. I'm the captain at, now. <laughs> exactly. At said airline. When I fly with a new hire, I feel like it's my job as a captain to give us some feedback. I always ask for feedback. Hey, how am I doing? It's a different world than I'm used to, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Give me some feedback. And in fact, it is sanctioned that I do a critique on everybody that's a new hire that I fly with, okay, which is kind of a pain. I will never slam them on their critiques. I'll talk to them like an adult to their face. How's my driving? I flew with a guy. That unfortunately was a Navy guy, which bums me out. I really wish this story was an Air Force guy. Uh, we finished and I said, all right, do you want the kindler, gentler debrief 
or do you oh. want the Navy bro debrief? Oh, and he goes, I can handle the Navy bro debrief. And I go, good. Your attitude sucks way too bad for how badly you fly this plane. Oh, well, and his jaw dropped. Rope. His jaw yeah, dropped. My jaw. And dropped. I go, I go, look, that's the way it is. That is the fact of the matter of it is. That's what other people are going to say about you. I go, you can have a horrible attitude, but you better fly the wings off the plane. <laughs> right. You can have a great attitude and maybe not to be the best pilot. There's unicorns out there that have great attitudes and can fly the wings off the plane, but you are not going to be successful in aviation in this company. If you have a bad attitude and can't fly at the end of it, he thanks me for it. He goes, you know what? I wonder how many other people thought that and didn't say it to me. I'm like, well, I don't know. That's bad on them. I mean, you have to be hire? honest with peace. Yeah. He's a new hire. Wow. Um, and he did better. And he actually texted me a week ago and told me, were you wearing your hat when you did this? I did not. I need to find my hat. We're currently not wearing hats right now. So, Make um, permanent. I know. God, I hate that. But I mean, it's the bottom line is people are so afraid to tell the truth now. Right. And I guarantee you that there are captains that flew with that guy that thought the exact same thing I did, but didn't tell him because they didn't want a new hire going to chief pilot and saying, oh, my God, this guy said this, this guy said I could back it up. I knew I could back it up. The things he did. Right. But we're so afraid of it. When people watch that video that I did with Nasty, one of the things that resounds with him is how honest and matter of fact he was. What was bad about his attitude? He was complained he about everything. Was he, he complained about everything. Everything at the particular airline we work for was the worst thing in the world. And he just was not educated. I told him at one point in the trip, I was like, dude, you've been at this company two months. I'm like, this is your get out of jail free card. You can go to any company you want. You're not going to lose any seniority. This is the one time in your aviation career you could do it. Um, but it's a bad attitude, man. Yeah. We didn't even talk cars. It was unbelievable. Oh, man. I know. It was oh, miserable. Man. Man. So. Man. But it was. He just complained about everything. And I felt bad. I'm like, dude, you have a long career ahead of you. If you're this unhappy, you got to go do something else. And he thanked me for it. So. Whatever. I'm probably on a snowfly list, but I don't care. Um, Dude, this but guy really thing. wants to fight behind KFC. Oh, in Louisiana, we fight at Sonic. Oh, man. I could do some Sonic right now. Yeah. Super Sonic okay. cheeseburger is number two. Dude. No onions. I need to come down there, hit up a Sonic, yeah, go shooting. Fight in the Sonic parking lot. You can let me drive your Corvette. That'd yeah, be Mustang good. drivers are not allowed. It won't even start if you try. It's like a haptic system or something. I haven't bought a Mustang yet, so that's good. Um, so I should still be good for that. Oh, God. I'm a Mustang driver. I drive Pale Horse. In fact, are you coming out uh, to Daytona? First weekend in April? I just got reminded of something that my son says. And it would fit perfectly to answer that. You know what my kid would say if you asked him that? What? Mover, you don't ask a man if he's coming out to Daytona. <laughs> Because you his know son he's talks like that. Daytona. Oh yeah, is, <laughs> is your is your son Carol Shelby? Like what? No, it cracks me up. Today, today I go uh, I go to take the trash out. Right, we're having breakfast. I go take the trash out to the thing, and uh, my boy goes, "I want to help." And my wife goes, "You want to help him take out the trash?" And he looks at my wife. He goes, "You don't ask a man." If you want to help take out the trash, you know that he wants to. How old like, is he? Sixty? Like how old is this child? <laughs> Four years old. You're dude, raising like, a sixty-year-old wombat. I'm like, what's wrong with you? It cra- dude, I was dying. I was like, who is this kid? Like, yeah. I, I looked at my wife. I was like, when I'm on the road, I don't know what your boyfriend's teaching him, but he's got to knock it off. But yeah, the um, UPS man can- has got some some stuff. It's not <laughs> uh, Daytona. It, it is the. <laughs> It is the uh, champ car race. I think it's the 13th, 14th. I don't know. I'll send you the dates. Oh, man. You should have told. Well, hold on. I have told. That's a Thursday, this. Friday. No, it's a Friday, Saturday. It's a. Well, I still have to bid my schedule. So let me know because I might be able to. Hold on. I'll look at it right now. Event calendar. It That'd is April 1st. Is... It's one day. It's a 14 hour Hawk performance. Daytona 14 hour. On April Fool's Day. On the Fools of April. <laughs> It's the Daytona International Speedway. No, is this, no, listen, there's no practice. There's no qualifying. You just get in and go. 
What are you driving? Pale horse. Is that what you a did Mustang. with that veteran? An actual company? Mustang. Yeah, it's battle scarred motorsports. Would they let me drive with them? Yeah, I can probably make that happen. You're a veteran, aren't you? Mom takes naps with FedEx, man. <laughs> yeah. See? Why Let's are you talk breathing offline. so heavily? Let's talk offline. It. I'm no well because it's like you're watching they, cops over there. What are you doing? Are you gonna wear that really tight racing suit? That's why I'm breathing heavy. I don't. I'm thinking, man. I got it's a lot Nomex, of stuff going dude. on in my life. Chicks dig it. Stuff. That's how I got no, a girlfriend. Stuff. She likes all the uniforms. <laughs> that is a fact. I think my wife likes my, my racing too. uniforms. No, my cop uniform. Uh, I got them all, dude. What? 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 Just give me a genre. <laughs> so. You like to dress up is what you're telling me. Cool. That's not yeah. weird at all. Are you also into furries? furries? That conversation came up while flying as well. <laughs> I furries? need to write a book about all the conversations that I talk about airborne. It's Did really you, funny. Uh, so it's the first. No. Well, I mean, we're, you're not going to drive to Daytona, are you? You're flying down there, right? I'm going to drive. I'm going to drive the Yukon. Really? How long of yeah. a drive is that? Uh, nine hours. We did How long it of when... a drive is it for me? Can you look that up? Uh, dude, what am I, your secretary? I don't know. We'll figure it out. Look, let's not put labels on things, all right? <sighs> but you're not going to drive the vet down there. No, I don't know. Okay. No. Um, the only reason is I'm like, hey, that uh, that's possible because I have time off. So it's a 14 hour, so 14 hour race. So there's no qualifying. No. There's no practice. No practice. You just, you just get, get in and up go. on the big oval and go. Well, you, no, it's the road course. So you're going to need to go find. So whatever <laughs> nerd you do, you find, so to speak. If you do them, that's fine, too. Uh, for your iRace or for your DCS, you need to get them to let you use their iRacing setup because you're going to need to practice. Oof. Okay. Well, yeah. Okay. Right. Well, you know what, dude? That's two hours. That's about That's the fun. limit. Thanks for having me. Yeah. You magically blast. showed up. I know. It's weird. It's, it's an endurance it. race. It's a 14 hour endurance race. There's like no, we just drive drivers. really slow. That's all it is. You slow. might drive slow. Mover. I probably would. What I, what I will not do is, is try to traction find the... control. No, there's no traction oh. control. No ABS. Um, last time I made the mistake with pale horses, I filmed it in 30 frames per second. And then down interpreted it down to 24 frames per second, thinking it would make it more cinematic. And the entire internet of driving instructors were like, mover, you're the slowest driver in the history of drivers. Why are you only doing 45 miles an hour? And apparently when you steal six frames from every second, it makes it look slow. I don't know. I'm, I'm not, I'm not. Can you go, when you record mine, can you do it the other way? Oh yeah. We'll speed yours up to like 240 that. frames per hey, second. Can Gonky oh. come too? That'd be fun. Can he get Let's, a hall pass to go race? Uh, dude, Gonky can't even. Kind of I, I get five minutes to talk to him on the phone, and he's like, "All right, That's sorry, more than bro. I get, dude. Sorry, bro. I was busy, bro. Dude, uh, I'm so busy right now. That's more than I get. But. Yeah. Yeah. All, All right. right. Well. That's uh that's it for today. I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you didn't, I don't care. Have a nice day. I love you. See you later. Mm-hmm.